continuing to work with regression, we really want to rely on technology for the heavy lifting, and it's our job just to understand and interpret the results. In StatCrunch, we want to go to Stat Regression. Simple linear if we just have one x value, one explanatory variable, or multiple linear if there are multiple explanatory variables. To start with simple linear, you would select your explanatory variable and you would select your response variable. Similar to some stuff we've done in previous chapters, we have our sample, we get our regression line from our sample, and then we're going to try to make inferences using hypothesis tests or confidence intervals about the population. And so what we'll really be testing here is to try to see if there really is evidence that the two variables are correlated. When doing a hypothesis test, our null hypothesis is that the slope of the regression line is zero. And what that means is that there is no correlation between the two variables. A line with zero slope is flat. And so when you change the x value, you stay flat. The y value doesn't change at all. And so in terms of correlation, that would mean there's no correlation. As x changes, y doesn't change as at all means there's no correlation. So that's our null hypothesis and we're trying to use this hypothesis test to prove that correlation does exist. That would be our alternative. Or you could prove that not only does it exist but it's positive correlation if you have greater than zero. Or that not only does it exist but there's negative correlation if you go with less than zero. And to set the alpha for your hypothesis test go down here 0.95 is what it is by default, which is an alpha of 0.05. But then just hit compute. And I'll walk through some of the key things to note here. What you're lo really looking for to conclude your test is the p-value for the slope of your regression line. And it's listed here, and it's also the same value that you'll see in this uh, p-value column at the bottom. Um, in this case, it also happens to be the same as the p-value for the intercept, but that's not typical. That's just because they're all so small here. But what you're, you want to look at this, and if the p-value is smaller than your alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. If it's larger than your alpha, you don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Another value shown on this chart is the standard error of the estimate right here. And that's just showing you... For, for any fixed value of x, any fixed explanatory variable, it shows you the standard deviation of the response variables for that value of x. And it's the same standard deviation no matter what fixed value of x you have. And just like when we worked with correlation previously, here's your equation. If you're trying to make a prediction, you plug in a value here for your explanatory variable and it gives you the predicted uh, response variable here for y, what you would expect on average with that given value for x. One thing I, I want to mention, and it's, it's mentioned in the book in a few places, but it's kind of off to the side and you may have overlooked it, is if the variables aren't correlated linearly and you don't have an equation like this to give you predictions, so you can't plug an x value in and get back to predicted y, the way we make predictions in that case is we just look at the average of all the y's. And then no matter what x value you're using, no matter what the x value is, the y prediction is the same. It's just the average of all the y values from your sample. And so to illustrate that, let's say we concluded that there was no correlation here between our x1 and our y. And there's not a least squares regression line we can use. We need to find the average of the data from our sample. So in StatCrunch, if you recall, you go to Summary Stats Column, and if you select the column you're trying to average, you can just hit Compute. It gives you a bunch of details. Mean is one of them. And so for any x value at all, if you said x is 20, what do you expect y to be? The answer is negative 48. If you said x is 30, what do you expect y to be? The answer is negative 48. If there's no correlation, we use the average. So to go back into regression, simple linear, 
If you're doing confidence intervals, type in here what you want your level of confidence to be. And what it'll give you here, and what you're typically looking for, is for the slope. Uh, we're 90% confident that the slope of the regression line for the population is between these two limits. And since zero is not in between these limits, we're 90% positive the slope's not going to be zero, which means there is correlation between those two variables. And to wrap up, let's just look once at multiple linear. You start by selecting your response variable and then select all your, oh, I wanted both of them, hold control down to select more than one and select all your explanatory variables. And leave this alone for now. We'll get into that more in future weeks. But again, you can do hypothesis test or confidence intervals. One thing that you'll need to do at some point is to save the residuals. And when you save the residuals, it gives, just gives you another column of data here of the residuals. And it gives you the equation of your regression model at the top. You can plug in values for x1 and x2 and see what your response variable would be. It gives you the value, no, your p-value right here, so you can test whether your, your hypothesis test should reject the null or don't reject the null hypothesis. And let's minimize this here. The residuals, the reason we save them is we can compare each explanatory variable to the residuals. And you can do that by going to, I wanted to go to graphs, sorry, graphs, and you want to graph your scatter plot. And you can look for patterns here to see if there's any discernible pattern. If there is a pattern, a linear model is probably not appropriate. You should scrap uh, that regression model that you got. This one looks good. The residuals are all spread out. And let's test X2 as well with the residuals. This one, not so good. A pretty clear U shape here. So that would be a red flag. The linear model would not be appropriate. And I want to wrap up by re-emphasizing the interpretation of slope. Slope measures how much the response variable, how much y changes when x increases by 1. And so that's straightforward if you just have one x, one explanatory variable. When you have multiple explanatory variables, there's going to be a slope for each of those x's. And we just talk about it for one x at a time. And you assume all the other x's are staying fixed. They're not going to change. But for whatever one x you're talking about, if it goes up by one, all the other ones stay the same, that one x increases by one, how much does that change the response variable? That's how you interpret the slope.